Thank you very much. Very nice question, actually. <laughs> I, I went to the World Bank when I was very young. I was 28 years old. And there was a program called the Young Professionals Program that enabled young people to enter directly at the World Bank and not as assistants or you know, summer interns, but, but fully fledged professionals. They took care of us for years and then we, we grew up in the bank. We were, there were 6,000 people that year postulating to 14 slots only. And I was good and lucky enough to get one of those 14 positions. I began uh, as the first natural resource economist and people didn't know what that was. Actually, it was an experiment. I was told we are hiring you as an experiment. We think you do geography, you do this, and I didn't do that. I did economics and ecology, which now is very well known, but we are talking about several decades ago. My work began in South Asia, in India, in Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh, oh. in Pakistan, in Sri Lanka, and I was taught how to be an economist at the World Bank those years, you know, at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Then I went to the policy side, that is to say, to, to write policy uh, papers. In, I wrote papers on world policies on fisheries, forestry, biodiversity, desertification, land management. I did studies about the national environmental action plans at the time that countries had renewable energy and so on. Then I moved to Africa. I was I worked in Africa as the senior agricultural economist for West African countries, the French speaking countries like Senegal, Mali, Niger, Burkina Faso, Chad, Mauritania. Then I went back to the operations evaluation department where I studied projects that had been completed to look at the experience, whether good, bad, were failures or not. So I spent several years and I wrote my first piece on sustainable development in 1987. Then after all of that, the bank said, we need someone at the UN, you know? And I was entitled the special representative to the UN from the World Bank. And I did a lot of work, but particularly enlightening for me, it was the, the issue of Commission on Human Rights. The bank had a very bad name at the time. And so I had to really get in there. And one of the things we did was right to development, which was a new concept that even today, people are not using it very much. Mm -hmm. I brought spirituality into public concerns. We dealt with public goods. And then I came back to the bank in 2003 to end my career in 2005, dealing with the policy of human rights and financial aid in the world at large. All right. So it's a big, big career, very supported. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot. I know the good, the bad, and the ugly of an institution like that, but as a person, uh, I couldn't have asked for better in my life. In a sense, I, I met so many people around the world. I visit so many countries like India. That is unforgettable. That is essential in my life to have been in India. So that was part of the, the whole process. And then after the bank, I continue doing things, but not related to the calculus, the mathematic of economics, but dealing with the ethical issues that are brought by the way we do economics. Wow, your association and work in so many countries and different parts of the world is really impressive. I'm sure uh, ethics, economics, and ecology uh, together would be enlightening for everyone. Top leaders must take a note. As you just mentioned about the World Bank sending you as a special representative to the UN, I would like to ask you about that. You have served as a special representative to the United Nations and uh, World Trade Organization from 1996 to 1999, uh, working in the general spheres of uh, human rights, peace, and social justice. Actually, your work during these uh, years for the UN and the WTO included vast, comprehensive, and impressive initiatives and endeavors. Uh, please share about your work for the benefit of our viewers. For me to have been nominated the bridge between a financial institution and a global social institution was like a ring for my finger. It was perfect. Uh, there's a lot of politics in it. There is a lot of uh, 
social issues, community issues, citizens and issues. So for me, it was a great honor. It was a time when the process of globalization began very strongly and the bank was heavily criticized by its conditionality of lending, you know, conditions for countries to receive money, moving towards neoliberalism, which is not my position in economics or in politics. So it was very good, you know, and it was the era of Boutros Boutros Ghali, Egyptian Secretary General, and then Kofi Annan from Ghana. You know, these were the two Secretary Generals which with I interacted at the UN. Two very different, very intelligent people, you know, to lead the UN. So I spent a lot of time in the Commission on Human Rights and the Economic and Social Council, because there was the debate on economics what to do, how to finance development, and so on. And one of the things that maybe people who are listening to this interview remember is the development goals. Somehow the countries agree on some global development goals for everyone, you know, and eliminate this fragmentation of the global commons, you know. This was very, very important. The global common means oceans, air, climate, biodiversity, security, and so on and so forth. So. I was like the bridging the gap and the understanding, the gap of understanding and the lack of democracy at the international level in ILO, International Labor Office, WHO, UNHCR, the refugees agencies with NGO and WTO. I brought to the, to the UN also a seminar on development, which now is a standard seminar where People from all over the world with different views, totally different views will discuss, debate, and fight for different views on development. I also was involved with many of the spiritual movements. In Geneva, the ecumenical movement, the ecumenical center. In New York, with all the NGOs, the, the World Council of Churches, you know, all sort of religion and so on. And I play an active role in the debate on economic, social, and cultural rights. That is the, the right of housing, the right of water, the, you know, the right of health, the right of education. I also did with multilateralism. Multilateralism means a group of countries trying to govern the world, but the group of countries being so different among themselves, defending their own self-interest. So there was a lot of debating on that. And uh, I enjoyed it a lot. And, it was a moment that is now very fresh, but it was the beginning of a seed of a transition between market-oriented societies to right-based societies, and we still are not adjusting. That is to say, education is not uh, like bread and butter we buy in the supermarket. No, education is a right for people. Well, how do you do it? How do you finance it? What do you do with it? And now people are saying, we have the right of a clean environment, we have the right of children, we have the right of women. So we're moving to these societies of rights. And I was at the beginning of that movement and I was very happy to do that. Great, how wonderful it is to know that uh, you have seen history in making and you have been part of the group of people making that history and shaping the globe. Um, you, uh, you have been working dedicatedly generally all over the globe and especially in Chile. You are a candidate for the presidential election in Chile in 2013 uh, as the leader of the Green Ecologist Party. Unfortunately, you lost the election. However, uh, please share your experience of the election. What inspired you to run for the presidential election? There is one phrase that inspired me to run is to serve my country and serve humanity through that position. It was not some ego frenzy, trying to get be a president of Chile because it's, it's a tremendously uh, di difficult and cumbersome position in public policy. I believe in politics. I believe in good politics. As the French say, the grand politique, you know, the, the, how to manage society, how to manage what is common to all of us. So I was interested in that, but most important, I wanted to change politics. I wanted to change the development paradigm. I wanted to change the way we were doing things in Chile. Mm -hmm. You know, and the slogan and the program was sustainable development society okay. with empowered citizenship. Today we live the era of citizens. Mm -hmm. And so this 
paradigm meant to recognize not only technological constraints, but biological constraint, ecological constraint, okay. and to look for a balance between our inner ecology and the outer ecology. Mm -hmm. The other thing that motivated me is the youth and the future generations, women, the elder, you know, our indigenous people, to bring about something that in India is very, very known and very powerful, the rural sector, rurality, as part of our roots, as part of our culture, as part of our, you know, tailor-made life. So essentially, if you say, why are you interested in this? Is service, seva, service. That's what interests me in politics. <coughs> and I was involved in politics for many, many years. I also ran for the Senate, the country, Senate of the country in, in 2017. I also lost for very small margin but it was very, very good, very good experience. I think everyone should go into politics to do good politics because politics is like air. We need to breathe and, and we hope to breathe good air, you know? So if the good people leave politics, then we have nothing. There is no much to do in the, in the world. If everyone thinks that politics stinks, that politics is, you know, frustration is money, is whatever, it doesn't matter to me, is a responsibility to make a good contribution to policy.